What's up guys, more Medic One, and today we are going to talk about what to look for when buying a used riding lawnmower. Buying a used riding lawnmower can be very stressful and it could take a pretty good hit on your pocketbook if you or your wallet if you don't know what you're looking for but let's take a look at this old murray goat that i've been having for the last six mowing seasons and let's go over a few things first and foremost just do a walk around you know look and see if it's been crashed or possibly you know the the deck's been caved in from hitting stumps and bricks and all kinds of stuff look for missing parts and just give it a you know everybody does the kick test just give it a good looking and just make sure everything looks decent so you've been on craigslist and you've been on the facebook facebook marketplace you've been in the, the your local newspaper looking for used riding more and everything seems to be just expensive right now everybody thinks that they have something that's worth a lot of money due to the market right now but don't let that deter you there's always going to be that one seller that has an absolute piece of garbage for sale and you need to know what to look for so you don't end up with a lemon all right so you've set up a meeting and you want to look at this lawnmower and you go out to the property where the lawnmower's at and you're looking it over and the customer says oh well i i can't start it the the battery's dead well you know what these batteries are pretty much all the same I recommend buying a jump box or bringing me a pair of jumper cables with me that way that i could start this more just ask questions say hey you know how old is it what what model is it uh, you know, I, you can say, I, I noticed that this Murray is black. Was it painted? Because most Murrays are red. And they'll, you know, surely they'll tell you the truth whether or not they painted it or not. But I know for a fact that this Murray came from the Home Depot back in 1999 when this was bought new. Pop the hood on it. Just give it a good looking around. One of the things you want to check is wetness around the carburetor if the carburetor seems to be leaking you need to let the customer know look for oil leaks just check the oil on it make sure you know it's not low as we can tell we've got a little bit of oil seepage there where the dipstick tube meets the seal for the block i need to address that but that's just penny nickel dime stuff that you can you know kind of help get the price down of the mower if you're unsure of the you know about the the year model if it's got a Briggs and Stratton you can pretty much tell what the year is going to be by the date code as you can tell this one's 99 so this lawnmower is probably a 2000 or a 99 but not a 98 look at the condition of the tires make sure they're good because this is one of the things that i like to look at and you can you know knock 20 30 40 bucks off the price if the tires need to be replaced because man tires are not cheap for a riding lawnmower now when it comes time to start the mower tell the customer that you want to start the mower don't let him do it because he may have some kind of special trick that you don't know about and so you don't want to be able to get this thing home and it not work properly for you but what you want to do you want to crank one of these up and you want to pay attention to the exhaust whenever it whenever you crank one up let's go ahead and do it you just want to listen for rattles and knocks now I've already been running this mower and I can hear it has a little bit of valve rattle and 
you can address that with the customer as well and saying, hey, you know, I may need to bring this shop and get this thing uh, tuned up or uh, I need to adjust the valves need to be adjusted or whatnot. But you're just looking for smoke coming from the exhaust. If it's smoke, blue smoke or black smoke, blue smoke normally means that one of a couple things. The piston rings are worn out, uh, the valve guides are getting worn out, the cylinder walls have scratches. But now, once you get it running and idling, just if you want to give it some throttle and check the smoke as you're throttling it up. Now I know because I've had this is my personal mower, but I know for a shadow without a shadow of a doubt I can mow my yard twice, and that would be two and about two and a half acres of mowing, and the oil level will drop about eight ounces. So that's about a gallon and a half, well about two gallons of gas, two gallons of gas to I'll have to add a little bit of oil to the engine. That doesn't bother me one bit. All small engines are gonna burn a little bit of oil. Uh, just check, and check it over real good. Uh, if it starts up fine and idles and has good you know, range in the throttle, good wide open, good idle, you're probably gonna be okay with your engine. If the customer has not been servicing his engine like he's supposed to, you'll be able to tell right here and you can do this in front of the customer if he won't let you check this stuff then you need to walk away because it, it ain't worth your time but what you want to do you want to get down in here in this carburetor throat and just wipe your finger down in here and you want to see if it's gritty oily if it's not it's good and dry if it's just got a little bit of fuel residue you're good to go what I, basically what i'm talking about is dirt ingestion if they have had dirt ingestion in the past, you won't know because if the customer's smart, they will have already done a service to it before they try to sell it. But you can tell whether or not the engine is going to be healthy just by cranking it, looking for this exhaust smoke. If it's blue smoke, it's burning oil. If it's black smoke, then you know you have an issue with the fuel delivery system. If it's white smoke and it's a Kawasaki liquid cooled, then you know you have possibly blown head gaskets or even just uh, an intake gasket that's allowing the coolant to be burnt along with the fuel. Now, as far as features go, it's personal preference of what kind of drive system that you prefer. I prefer just a six-speed or a five-speed peerless transmission with uh, just a clutch brake. To give the steering wheel a shake, if you can turn the steering wheel a long ways and it doesn't turn the front tires, then we know that we have some issues. Now, I know for a fact that I've got some bushing issues here on my tractor. And if we look down here, I'm trying to zoom in there for you. On the steering sector and I'll turn the steering wheel you can see that we have a little bit of play there now you just want to kind of get down low and just take a take a good look at the deck if it's a little bit dirty just just you know get it cleaned off the best you can you want to look for rust because these decks like to have water puddle up on them especially when the customer doesn't uh, blow the wet grass off the deck it's always an issue with rust especially on a mower that's 20 plus years old check your belts for wear these are like i said these are all just nickel dime stuff that you can replace at home but you can always address it and be like hey you know belts worn out 
you know, go ahead and get on the machine, get acquainted with it, uh, get the customer to tell you where everything what and what everything does. This, you know, of course, that's the PTO engagement lever, and you have your your clutch and your brake here, your throttles over here and stuff. So you know where all that stuff is. But you need to get on it, crank it up, and drive it. Make sure all your uh, your gears work reverse neutral make sure it goes in neutral one two three four five six and just make sure they no no binding everything you can feel the detents in the transmission are still you know good on this one After you've made a couple passes with it you just kind of want to look at the cut quality and for a 20 year old mower this mower cuts pretty good check the blades make sure the blades are sharp you know all these things can be you know kind of to help you out during the purchase process I was able this this guy had this mower listed for 450 on Amazon, uh, not Amazon, excuse me, on a Facebook marketplace, and he was only 20 miles from me. So I called him and I said, hey, you know, I want to come look at this old Murray goat that you have. And he says, sure, come on out. And the guy was super honest with me. He said, man, uh, it's not running. Uh, it needs a carburetor or a carburetor rebuild. And I was like, you know, man, you know, for 450, it really ought to be ready to cut grass, dude. And he was like, well, you know what? I'll knock a few dollars off of it. And I said, well, it needs tires and the blades are worn out. And I know, and I told him, I said, heck, we can't test the transmission because the engine's not running. And I said, I'll tell you what, I'll give you $200, ca $200 cash. And he took it on the spot and was happy with it. And the rest is history. I put a carburetor kit on this thing uh, over the past six mowing seasons five to six mowing seasons I've put a blade spindle or two on it and those things are absolutely so inexpensive on Amazon and they're not bad quality uh, blade spindles for a Murray you can buy those for ten bucks a piece just keep your oil changed in it and shoot $200 mower lasting five years and I've barely put anything in it that's my cup of tea right there now man we have gotten so much rain that I finally waited until Saturday to 
get this yard cut. I couldn't cut it last during the week because we had more rain and more rain and more rain. Here goes a cicada. Did you see that? I don't know if I caught that on camera or not. If you got a little something out of this content, please give me a thumbs up and smash that subscribe button. And uh, while you're there, go ahead and click that bell to get all my new videos. Y'all have a good rest of your weekend. More Medic One.